Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Spare Parts, and today I'll be reviewing set number 75309, the Armor's Mandalorian Forge. Mandalorian Armor's Forge? I'm not sure which order it is, the name is kind of confusing, but it's a forge for Mandalorians, I know that. But anyway, the set came out in the year 2021, came with 258 pieces and three minifigures, so let's take a closer look at the Forge of Mandalorian. I don't know. So taking a first look at the set, you can kind of see it's split up into two sections, with one of them being like the outside surrounding circular area and the middle being the actual forge part of it. You can see it comes with three minifigures that are all really detailed, which is really cool for a set like this that's only like $30 to have three really detailed minifigures, even though one of them is the Mandalorian, which we have a lot of. But yeah, let's take a closer look at the play features. Starting off with probably one of the coolest play features in the set is that is it's splittable or removable maybe not the coolest play feature but it makes it much easier to move and stuff oh well that fell out but anyway we'll take a look at the circular area first and what this is is this is the forge area where the mandalorian armor kind of melts down the beskar and then there's like a table and stuff but the way the forge works is you kind of have this box thing and you just place it in between the flames in the middle and then you can get it in there it's kind of hard to get in there and it doesn't really lie straight which is kind of a downsize but and then you can kind of move this over the top and then i don't really know what this is but it it melts it apparently i'm not sure if that's accurate but it sure looks pretty cool i really like the blue flame and it's nice how you can kind of pretend that you're melting it and then there's some clips on the sides for like tools and stuff and then while you're waiting we can have like the mandalorian sit at the table if you can get him to sit there good mandalorian he's sitting and waiting patiently Taking a look at the surrounding wall now, I'm not really sure, this is something I thought about when I first saw this set, is that like, are you supposed to buy more of these to create like a surrounding circle around the middle? And I don't think so, because the way it's oriented on the side, there's like these weird black pieces, and I don't think it would actually connect, but it'd be really cool if they kind of made that, even though you'd have to spend more money, which is always a downsize with Lego, a downside. But anyway, let's take an actual look at the play features here. And one of them is a door, which you can have your minifigures walk through, which is pretty accurate because I'm, I'm guessing the room has a door and you just kind of, you can actually fit through it, which is pretty nice. Sometimes you can't fit their head through the doors, but that's a nice feature. And then there's a broom over here. So if the armorer wanted to sweep the floor, she could. And then over here, there's some like, there's an unprinted Mandalorian helmet. Then there's some other tools like an ice skate. I might think that might be like an iron or something. And then there's also this case here, which can open, which reveals some nice stickers or a nice sticker. And you can kind of put stuff in there. There's not anything put there in the set, but you can definitely put stuff. And this is actually removable. So you can pull it out and then you open it. And then there's some stuff inside the crates, which is super nice. There's a, here I'll pour it out. There's a piece of Beskar. There's a silver blaster, which are always nice. I really like the silver blasters and a thermal detonator. So that's pretty nice and put that off to the side. So yeah, there's a nice little cabinet here. It's kind of weird how there's nothing in the cabinet, but there's stuff underneath. And then over here, we have some nice, like a control panel piece, probably to control this machine over here, which I'm not sure what this is. This might be another like Beskar forming machine, but you can kind of flip the switch and yeah. So there's some more kind of machinery play feature stuff here. I should really watch the Mandalorian again because I don't know what all this stuff is, but yeah. There's some pretty nice play features on this set. It's a nice, nice workshop. All right, so now talking about minifigures. So starting off, we have Din Jaren, I think that's his name. I don't really remember what his full name is, but the Mandalorian, basically. And he has some nice accessories here. We have his rifle thing, and then we have this, like, other gun piece. You don't see this very often. It's kind of nice. It looks different. And then here, I'll take his accessories off because it's a lot easier to show his printing. He's really detailed. He has that new Beskar armor and arm printing, which I think is super nice. It works really well. And then underneath his helmet, we have nothing, which I don't remember when the set... It's 2021 when it came out. Yeah, 2021. And I feel like they had his head shown in the show by then, so I kind of wish he had his... Well, maybe not in this episode. I don't know. But I know some versions of The Mandalorian should have his head print, and they don't. But anyway, other than that, he is pretty detailed. On the back, we have a jetpack that is Beskar colored, which is super nice. Something I often complain about with Mandalorian minifigures is I wish it came with the cape as well as the jetpack, so it'd be like the ultimate Mandalorian. But yeah, other than a few minor flaws, I feel like this is a really detailed minifigure and good job, Lego. Moving on from the Mandalorian, we have the armor and she looks pretty detailed. I think she has some nice leg printing and even toe printing, which did the Mandalorian have that? No, the Mandalorian doesn't even have toe printing, which is super nice for this minifigure. You can't really see it though, because it's black on brown, which doesn't print very well, but really detailed legs, really detailed torso as well, which has like a feather or 
wool cloak in the back, which is super nice. And she has some nice accessories. I think this is for holding Beskar over the fire and then a hammer. And then under the helmet, of course, there's going to be nothing because we never see her face. And the helmet is pretty nice. I've had people complain or I've heard people complain that it's not very accurate because they just reuse this helmet from someone else and the horn shouldn't really be in this orientation. <laughs> I don't really care that much, to be honest. Like, I don't care that much about minifigure accuracy except when it's like really obvious. And I feel like this works fine and also makes up with it with the really nice toe printing, which I think is like a new thing for Lego. And finally, we have my favorite minifigure in the set, and that is Paz Vizsla. I think that's his name. I had to look him up as well. I just know that he's really detailed. He has toe printing as well and very detailed leg printing. Just look at that. That's crazy. No side leg printing, which I think they don't do that, but that actually work really well with this minifigure. I feel like Lego should start doing that. And then underneath the helmet, nothing, but it's a very nice detailed helmet piece. So this is the piece that covers his torso print, and I think it looks super cool. It has some nice printing with the Mandalorian logo and some nice printing in the front. It has a brick-built backpack, which I think looks pretty cool. Kind of wish there was a print on it. It, it. I don't know, is it really yellow? I think he has a flamethrower, so it might be yellow, but I don't know if that's accurate, but it looks, it looks good. It looks fine enough. And then underneath him, we have some nice torso printing, which is really detailed. Like, just look at the back. Why did they put so much effort into him? Like, if this isn't even going to be shown, that's just good job, Lego. You put lots of effort into this minifigure. And one of the final thing is he has this really nice flamethrower blaster thing, which has a piece on the end. All right, so now time to talk about stickers and prints. So starting off, we have this thermal detonator, which is in this back thing. And this is a piece that Lego uses all the time. It's not unique at all. So just put that to the side. And then we'll start off with this middle section here. And this whole ring is stickers. And I tell you, that was such a pain to apply. I got so annoyed while doing that because like circular stickers are just so difficult because you'll have to like line it up on one end and the other end. And when it's like circular like that, it's just a pain. You have no idea the pain I went through with circular stickers. So yeah, that's annoying. I really don't like those. And then moving on to this area right here, we have a sticker right here for the Mandalorian logo, which I think is on the other side as well, which is a nice detail. They didn't really put that much effort to the outside, so it's nice that there's at least something. And then there is a sticker or a print right here for the control panel, which is used quite frequently. And then on the inside, there's a sticker for the tool case, which I think it was pretty easy to apply. And I like that one. That's that's a good sticker. And then over here we have some stickers for the control panel things. And I don't I think these might be unique. Well, most stickers are usually unique, but that's kind of nice. I kind of wish this one was printed though cuz it's small enough it should be. And then we have a Mandalorian like hologram right here. It's kind of hard to see, but I think that's that's a print. That's pretty nice. I can't imagine that being a sticker. That'd be so painful to apply. But yeah, that's really nice and detailed. I kind of like that. And then I think that's all the stickers and prints in the set. So yeah, a lot of stickers and some of those stickers are just terrible to apply. If you hate stickers, then it might not be the set for you, although it is only four stickers. Ah, that was so annoying. One more hidden play feature I forgot about is that underneath this table, there is a crate. So if you wanted to put your thermal detonator in there, I think that's like one of the only things that'll fit in there. You can kind of like hide it away. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but the option is there if you wanted to do that. All right, so now time to talk price per piece. So when it was revealed or released in 2021, it retailed for $30, which I think is what it still retails for today. Why is there a bug back there? Hey, Mr. Bug, I'm trying to film a video. Can you move, please? All right, so I moved the bug. Apparently he did not want to hear the price per piece. But anyway, back to what I was saying. It released in 2021 for 258 pieces. So that's around like or it was $30, so that's around 11 cents per piece, which isn't the best deal. But I feel like the minifigures being really detailed kind of makes up for it. Maybe, yeah, maybe it is a little bit lacking in the value department, because some of the minifigures are not fan favorites, definitely. So it's an okay price per piece and okay value. So overall, I feel like this set is a 7 or an 8 out of 10, probably more a 7 out of 10, because I don't know, there's a lot of weak parts, or not really that many, but I forgot to mention that this thing right here can get really loose. Man, that bug cannot leave me alone. All right, so back to what I was saying. This part right here, this section can get really loose and it's hard to carry because it's like not connected very well. But other than that, I feel like it's pretty well put together. It's just like, how are you gonna display this? Cause it just, it looks weird just being open like that. I don't know. I tried displaying it for a little while and I didn't like it. And also I feel like the minifigures are pretty detailed, although some of them people don't like very much. And I don't know, it's just like, you can't really do anything with it. Like I just have it in storage, so. Overall, I feel like it's a 7 out of 10. It has some good minifigures and 
annoying stickers. Oh yeah, the stickers are annoying as well. But yeah, it's a 7 out of 10. Can that bug please leave me alone? I, I just, it keeps coming back. I keep moving it to the other side of my desk. Gee. So there you have it, guys. That's my review of set number 75319, the Armorer's Mandalorian Forge. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. And I need to go take this bug outside.